Hi, um, this is quite a basic program that I've built using Java. Um, I've used the program NetBeans to build it. Basically what it does, it just calculates um, any sort of formulas that you have around the topic of electricity and then physics. Um, I've used, well I've done it for 12 basic formulas that I use more, most often. Um, I've also included, well in case you don't know what letters, what the letter stands for, I've also included this. Um, let's take a look at it. You just click whatever formula you want. You can always go back. Let's just go at the first one now. Um, this one is P equals by VI. Um, obviously, it's quite simple really. Just put in your values for B and I. It will calculate P for you. Um, it also goes into decimal places. Um, but then again, sometimes you may only have I and P and you may need to find V. Well, it works just like that. You can easily input in those two and it will give you V. Or same thing goes for this. Yeah, and then sometimes you get an infinite numbers. Quite interesting, really. Uh, now, if you only put in one number, you will get an error when trying to calculate it. Uh, same thing will happen if you don't put in anything. Um, there is also a clear function. That, let me just show you that again. Um, yeah, it just clears everything in the boxes. Uh, and then we can go back to the formulas. I'll look, take a look at a more complex formula, like this one, for example. Um, I equals P divided by R to the power of a half. Again, it works exactly the same way. Input in any two values gives you the value for i. Um, the reason I've left it at infinite decimal places, well, I didn't round it, is because sometimes in questions you're asked to round it for two, two decimal places, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's three significant figures. So it's best to just leave it like this. Mm, again, clear back and when exiting another message appears asking if you're sure if you wish to exit. Now let's take a look at the code behind it. Here is, um, this is the design for the main form. As you can see I've used 13 forms for, for the whole program, one form for each formula. Now, um, yep. Yeah. First, you need to import a javax.swing uh, joption pane. This is used for the message boxes. And I've just got a whole lot of these. Uh, basically, when, it, when a button is pressed, it disposes of the current form, the main form, and goes to epowf1. I've chosen quite interesting names. Mm, that epowf1 would be the one we've just looked at, which is this form. Uh, I've done this for every single button. Now over here, when the exit button is pressed, this is the code for the message box appearing. Uh, so when the exit button is pressed, it asks you if you're sure if you want to leave. If you say no, nothing happens, and if you say yes, it does exit. A whole lot of other buttons. And that's actually it for the main form, it's really nothing complex. Uh, now this is the first formula, the one that we looked at. Uh, again, I imported um, J option pane. Uh, this is the back button. This button takes us, well, it's this one, takes us back to the main form. So again, it disposes of the current form and opens up the main form. This is the clear button. It's extremely simple. It just sets every single text box, that's the name of the text boxes, to nothing. This is the same code as before the, for the exit button. Uh, now this is the part where actual calculations are made. So I've declared um, three variables. That's these three. Uh, made them all doubles so decimal places can be used. And now the first thing that I did was call an error function. Um, I'll get back to that later. This is kind of the main, most important part of the code. Mm. It's basically the same thing, just over and over. Now, 
let's go through it step by step. If p input, that's the name of the text box, equals nothing, that means if this is empty, then b equals whatever is in b input and i equals whatever is in i input. Basically, so if this box is empty, then v equals whatever is here and i equals whatever is here. And then it just does p, um, yeah, p equals v times i, which is the formula. After it calculates that, it just outputs p, v, and i. Now the problem here is that in when getting the text from the, from the text boxes, I had to parse them because text boxes only uh, work in strings and I had to parse them into double. Um, here I had a problem with that, so what I did, I made the program think it's text by using just these, but it doesn't make any difference. Uh, now the same thing repeats itself, else if, um, else if, if v input equals nothing, get p, get i, and then do v equals p divided by i, and then output all three. And same thing over here. Now to the error function or method. Um, again, just a really long piece of code that I've decided to split up into several lines. Basically just says if p input is empty and v input is empty and i input is empty, which means if all three are empty, or, this is or, um, the first and the second box are empty, the second and the third, or the first and third, so this is just all all possibilities that could cause an error by leaving the box empty. Uh, well, if this case is true, then it just shows the message box. And that's basically all that is to it. Now we can take a look at some of the more complex formulas. Uh, for example, this one. Here I have used, well, it's the same as before, except I've changed the name of, names of the variables um, depending on what the formula states. Um, here, the problem that I had, well, wasn't really a problem, I managed to solve it, was that i was equal to, yeah, i was equal to p divided by r to the power of a half. Now, there's actually a function in Java that just simply allows you to do power, power of whatever. So I did p divided by r, um, and then I made i equal i to the power of a half, and I'll put it again. And yeah, here, this is, instead of doing i squared, we, again, I could have just simply used this function and instead of 0 0.5 for 2, but I just decided to do i times i, which I thought would be simpler. And then I've also used in, was it this one? I've used another function. Yeah. Here, i was equal to, well, i squared was equal to pi, a p divided by r, uh, therefore I had to square root i, and again this is just another simple function, math dot sqrt and i. And yeah, that's about it, it really is quite simple, it's just a lot of repeating itself, most of these are really the same. And um, thank you for watching.